Hello, welcome to Marketing Matters, the show where we explore all things marketing and uncover those things that matter for you and your success. I'm your host, Denise Malay, and my hope and mission is to bring marketing and technology to you in a way that's useful, without jargon, complexity, or confusion, so you can grow your business, expand your impact in the world, and build your best life. Today's episode is called Google Search Console and You. We're going to be talking about the benefits that Google's tool called the Google Search Console can bring to you and your business and how it's essential to understanding your findability and how your website gets included in Google's vault of information. So let's move on. Uh, Before we start, though, I want to share a quote with you from Thomas Carlyle. He says that man is a tool using animal. Without tools, he is nothing. And I really believe this. I believe that we need to take advantage of the tools that are out there for us for our success. So let's move on. So the first thing that we want to understand is what does it mean to to monitor your website or, or to use this tool? It is a monitoring tool, Google Search Console. And monitor means to observe and check the progress or quality of something over a period of time. And you keep it under like a system of review. For us, it means tracking statistics to see the progress of our actions to make us findable online. And if you haven't heard me talk about that before, it's, it's the steps you have to take to make sure that the things you create blogs, podcasts, web pages, landing pages, all those online pieces of content, the steps you have to take to make sure that Google knows they're out there and that they can read them and understand what you were trying to convey with them. So there's a bunch of steps you have to take. I talk about them in a few previous episodes and in one of my workshops, but it's something that you really need to do because you invest all this time and energy in creating these resources and You don't want it to just sit there. If nobody can find it, then they can't do business with you, right? So the whole reason we're creating all this content and all these things is we want people to see them. And the biggest way that we can do that is have it, or not the biggest way, an opportunity for us is to have that information included in Google's Google's information. So if someone sits down at the google.com website in their browser and they type in their search query, then they have an opportunity to maybe connect with you if you're available to answer their question or their query. And also if someone meets you along the way but they don't remember your business name, so they're not gonna know your website name maybe, and they only know your name if they're if you're lucky enough that they remember that, they're gonna put that in Google search and you wanna be found. You want the things that you do to be found. So that's what I mean by findability. So Google Search Console is a supporting tool to make sure that the the actions you're taking to be findable are working. So let's move on. Google Search Console, right? We just talked about what it is. Um, We want to know how it works. And then what will it show you when you use it? So Google Search Console, it's tools and reports that help you measure your site's search traffic and performance and fix your issues. Now, search traffic sounds very techy, but really what that means is, is people, how many people come to your site. So it's if people click on your site um, or they enter the name into the Google Search Console, or Google search itself, it's just the bar in Chrome, then that's a click. And you want to know if people, you want to know how many people visit your website, right? Because you want to know whether it's working, whether people are reading it. That's one of the things it looks for. So the first thing in talking about how the Google search console works is you have to go through a verification process. And the reason this happens, and what that means is you have to be able to look at the statistics Google Google collects on your site and apply the tools, um, logic, and programming to the traffic that you see going to your site that Google can see. 
so it can create reports for you. Well, it can't, you can't look at just anybody's website, right? You have to own the website for Google to allow you to see the reporting and the numbers on it. That's a good thing for privacy. So how do you do that? How does Google know that you are the actual owner of your website? Well, they go through a step, and this screen is part of when you do the searching for Google search steps and how to use console. This is the screen you get to. It tells you the things you have to do to verify that you own the website that you want to see the data on. Okay, so for example, this is from my website. I blacked out the things that were personal just so, you know, privacy. But you go and you, you either use one of these methods to put a, a number string, a, a, they call it a tag. It's really just a bunch of numbers and letters that are assigned to you. You put that in a place on your website. Google goes out and reads your website for that piece of information and says, okay, you put the number there, then you own the site and you're verified. So now you can go and see all the wonderful things that we've built for you. So you, I'm sure you'll find more instruction in Google documentation to follow these steps when you go to actually set up your connection with Google Search Console. But you have to go through the verify step before you can do anything else. Now the next step it does after you verify is it's going to look for a file called a site map. You don't usually have to create this. Platforms like uh, Kajabi, GoDaddy, um, Go High Level, all, all sorts of other platforms create these for you automatically. If you have a WordPress site, you may have to put a plugin in that creates your site map. But the site map is really just a list of all the pages on your site. And Google uses this file to say, okay, for site like me, mmediagroupllc.com, it starts at the home page, so there's an entry for home, and then there's an entry for about. There's one for um, work with me, there's one for contact, there's one for products, right? And it just gives a list of all the active pages that you have for your site. And this is kind of a guide so Google can see that you have a valid website out there. And the little programs that go around and read all the web pages, they call them bite bots or spiders, they go through your site map one page at a time and look at every one of those pages and follow all the links on your pages and evaluate the content for usefulness and how much it's going to help their users who are searching for things. So they read the whole page and analyze everything on it for the cues that we talk about in the Simple Ways workshop that set it up for being read by Google. So, these two pages that you're looking at here, the top one says, how many pages were included, indexed, from my website and put into the Google Vault? And those are in green. And then how many were not included? And that's a lot, right? Um, and this is from an earlier time when I first set up the site, but I wanted you to see what it looks like when things aren't always right. Because one of the reasons we do this is to make sure that the indexing is successful. So that it, indexing meaning it can read all of your pages and recognize them. So here, on my case, down at the bottom it said duplicate without user, page with redirect, some things that I had to fix before I could go back and get those pages included in search results. So this is very important for you to do because it tells you whether you've set things up properly, um, whether they can be found, right? So I took care of all these things and now my pages are included, but I wanted you to see what it looked like when I first started on this website. Um, okay, so after you go through and you get all your pages straightened out and they all get indexed and Google has excellent support. At the end of this presentation, there's going to be a link there that you can go to that has all sorts of tutorials and explanations of all these steps. So you can get way more detail than I can give you in this very short time. So 
Anyway, after the, this step where your site pages have been read and everything's indexed, and this doesn't happen instantaneously, that's the one thing I wanted to mention, is that you submit your site map, you tell Google that you're out there and ready to be indexed, ready to be read by the programs, that could be a day or two before you see any results, so don't get alarmed. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the programs are constantly running, and they're on a pathway around the internet. And there's many of them that are just reading pages, reading pages, reading pages. So wherever your page lives on whatever server it is, so if your Squarespace server or the Kajabi server or a WordPress server that you're on, they don't read them on demand. They have a schedule <clears throat> when they visit all these different places to grab all new information. So it might be a few days before you see anything on your page, so don't get upset about that. It's just going to take some time. Once you're in there, then it's on a schedule. It'll come back when things change, or if you have a schedule that comes weekly because you don't change it very much, they'll come weekly or monthly, or we'll talk about those details later. Um, so now, once you get it all set up, all the pages are included, what is it going to show you as you go forward? Well, the main thing, the main thing, is this silly looking graph right here that tells you the traffic analysis of your site and that's the clicks and how many came and all that stuff so let's dive into what this actually means this blue portion right here this says total clicks now mind you this is for a date range so um, actually let me go back I think the date range was showed here last three months and it's web traffic not mobile traffic so you can choose which type of traffic you want to see this is from the internet and so total clicks is how many times a user clicked through to your site and it depends on the search result that you have so from search a search engine results page that you get if somebody was at google.com and they entered your name and you came up on a list and they clicked on your name your home page let's say that would count as a click from search into your website. So that's what this blue number is here, and that's what that blue graph is. So if you see that there are spikes in traffic to my website, I don't know what makes them happen, but it's interesting to see, right? Then the next thing that you want to look at is total impressions, the purple. Total impressions is how many times a user saw a link to your site in search results. It's calculated differently for images and other search result types, depending on whether or not the result was scrolled into view. So let's say you are included in search results for whatever keywords they found on your page or what the theme of your page is, and someone requested put those words in the search box, and you were put on a page and shown to the user on page one or two or three. But let's say you're on page 10 and the user didn't see page 10. They only went to one, two, and three of results. Well, you may not be included, which is what they're saying. I believe you are included up to a certain point, but if you're really far down the list, you don't get included in impressions. But that's how many times people actually saw your information. So in the last three months, 838 times my information showed up on a search results page. That's pretty good for me because I didn't do anything to get there. It just, it happened because I set up a few things. <coughs> Excuse me. The next thing is the average click-through rate. And this is the percentage of impressions, this purple number, that resulted in a click. So 3% of everybody who saw my pages clicked through. Not really great, not really high, but considering I didn't pay anything for it and I didn't do very much to get there other than to set it up, that's still 3% of, of 800, that's pretty good. So that means that I'm presenting something that's coming up in search results that people want to find out more about. So that's kind of good, I think. And then the next 
I mean, I, I want to see that go up. This is obviously very early on the last three months in a very new website. So there's not a lot of information out there yet. So I'm hoping it'll get much better. And people I know get much bigger numbers than that, but this is just an example. The next thing is the average position of your site in search results based on its highest position whenever it appeared in a search. So what that basically means, that gobbledygook means, is the highest place any of my content was presented is the 18th spot on a page, which isn't bad because you figure there are maybe 10 or 12 on the first page. So that means I was included on the second page for a few things. So that's pretty good. So the higher you are towards the top, the better. Um, so here's an example of a search engine results page, just in case you're not familiar with them, which I'm sure you all are. But here is an example of an entry that is counted as one. So if you're thinking of this website page, this is actually the second organic result. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. There were four ads above this. So four, five, six, seven. There's two more, eight, nine on this page. But they also put space in for these people always also ask. So the first page doesn't always have a total of 10 or 12. It's variable. And if you're, the person's search results show up in your description, your title for your page, or the URL, the address, or on the text of your page, and it, and it responds well to what the person's looking for, and you give in-depth information that's helpful and useful, you could show up there. And you don't have to pay for it. It's just called organic traffic, and that's fantastic, right? Excuse me. <coughs> so, as I said before, Google has great documentation for these uh, tools that it has created. And so, if you go to this address here, this support.google.com web, webmasters, it takes you to this main page that shows you all about the different reports, how to get verified, how to connect your site, anything you want to know. And I think that you will get great information there. But please, if you have questions, come back to my next show episode and uh, stick around for the Q&A afterwards, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. So I have a free gift for you today, five website secrets to make sure your ideal customers can find you. And it's at dmalay.com slash five, F-I-V-E. Please go there and sign up. I'll be happy to send you a link to it. I'm sure it'll help you with your findability. And thank you. I'm so glad you could join me for this episode of Marketing Matters. I know how precious your time is. And my hope is you came away from this episode with some nuggets you can apply to your business. My aim is to provide clear, useful info for you that you can have a thriving business, amazing relationships with your customers and clients, and as always, if you have any questions, drop a post on my show Facebook page, Marketing Matters. Thank you so much.